this summertime I go over there and you know they have the flowers they're blooming you know I'm not much into flowers but uh, it was an it was different from a plant anyway you, you go out there you feel like you're outside at a park or something you know you sit there you you know either you sleep or you you just feel relaxed you know sometimes you you know think about uh, life in general you know sometimes uh, I would have bad days and you know going to work whether it's you had a bad day at home or something you come in there you go outside you know you just relax you know um, even people from the body shop downstairs go upstairs and do the same thing you know it was famous for that um, like it was a thing of beauty Mm -hmm. I had double flowered impatience that high with 150 blooms on it. Quite a lot of people went up and quite a lot of people enjoyed it. People came from downstairs up there just uh, for their lunch hour. Then again, it wasn't publicized. And I, I would say only half the people in the plant knew there was a, a garden up in the Like, this Greg McDonald that gave me the blanket thing, I mean, he was very cooperative and everything. You wouldn't want any better better help. When he saw what I did, he was flabbergasted. I mean, you know, oh, thank you. Isn't that nice? So what happened is I put a trellis up. It happened by accident. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the study of the garden there, right? Yeah. Right? It was uh, bundles of old quarter-inch tubing. Yeah. So I just cut it up in lengths and bent it round and made hoops out of it. Bent them around yeah, a piece of yeah, pipe. Yeah. And stuck them in and covered them with uh, with plastic, yeah, you know, yeah, and it saved them from the frost. And I looked yeah. at it afterwards and I thought, we could grow stuff up there. You yeah, know, so, sure. So if we extended Morning it, glories. Morning glories, lots Yeah, of yeah. Like a confetti. Oh, yeah. It's one of those patented roses. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, oh, isn't that nice? The way to sort of phase a plant out while you're on your breaks and on your lunch, you wouldn't have to think about going back to work for those half hour, a few minutes or whatever, and you could just relax and enjoy. Um, there was the odd little bird that would come around and that would sort of pique your interest because then it would sort of be bringing more life to the to the garden as it were. And then I guess, like I said earlier, the more garden went up, the more the people went out. So it's got to be like a little community out there rather than just a, a drudgery or a workplace or whatever. So it, it was good. It was, it was relaxing. It was peaceful. Mm -hmm. You know, until you had to go back to work. But it was pleasant, yeah. Did you go out there every day? Not every day, no. I went out occasionally. I wasn't like every single day because a lot of times you couldn't find a room because so many people went out there it was sort of you had to fight for a place because um, after a while it got really popular. I only have seen it the one time <laughs> when um, he was going to give me some cuttings. He had um, wandering Jew or something like that out yep. there. So we, you know, we snuck out of department. <laughs> Boss didn't know where we were. <laughs> and we went down and um, he cut them off for us, and then he'd cut, he used to come back up every so often and check and make sure we were taking care of the plants properly. He'd come up and he'd, he'd check our plants, he'd tell us if we were watering them too much or not enough, if there was an infection, or whether you should, you know, fertilize them. We call him the plant man, you know? Yeah. Sure, the plant <laughs> I of us couldn't remember his name, but we knew exactly what they said when they said the plant man. We knew who they were yeah. talking about. Yeah. yeah. I took donations of seeds and plants and, uh, Rather than buying soil additives, then I, I would use the composter up at the cottage and bring it down, finish compost down, you know. You don't have to spend millions of dollars. Uh, you need cooperation, you need caring. I've got a photograph of a, a gentleman that uh, he, he didn't come in to work for maybe more than three days a week. One reason or another. <laughs> Usually it was what he mixed with the Coke, that <laughs> with the Coca-Cola, and that uh, for anything coming in. But he was uh, living in a small apartment, and uh, he'd never had a garden or anything else. But he liked hot peppers, so I started growing hot peppers for him. And uh, he wanted to see how they were doing, so he, he started coming in, and he coming in five days a week. <laughs> so, fellow called Holly, I, I don't know his, his second name, but he, he just loved cucumbers. And every morning we'd go down and see if the cucumbers were big enough, you know. And the, the lady that was in the uh, cafeteria <coughs> loved zucchinis. And she'd be looking forward to the zucchinis. 
And uh, one time a chap came along and said that uh, he would really like his wife to have these flowers because he'd never seen anything like them before, you know. I said, okay, well, take a half a dozen, but, you know, that he'd take them. And uh, so it helped me have a little more faith in human nature because uh, there they were. Somebody come come along and they could have filled a basket with the tomatoes and taken everything that, for themselves and left none for it, but it never happened. So I was very happy about that. A lot of people took cuttings and uh, they would come back and, you know, like adopting a child. And they could see that feeling at the end when uh, everything was being taken apart. That was quite a sad time. Because uh, You, you literally had to tear it apart, you know. And there were some boughs of plants there that had been taken in during the winter and brought out during the summer and and grown so that were, they were like uh, a grouping, you know. And some people would want that and some people would want this. And uh, it was literally like tearing the family apart sometimes, you know. Yep, well, I've got some other plants and all other people have got plants and uh, they still talk about them, you know. Even now, when I walk through Oshawa, uh, a number of the people that took cuttings say, hey, you know, that plant is still doing, that's still doing it okay. It was a memory. It was a piece of the van plant. It was a, a piece of the people they worked with. It was like a souvenir piece of the building wall <laughs> and they wanted the soil you know until every every scrap every scrap of soil went you know people would take it in bags and bales and everything else I think they thought it was magic you know and uh, it was magic it was